Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Valley Sports Rewind. I'm Mike Canici, and today we are jo- joined by two Derby softball coaches, Jen Moffitt, who is now the head JV coach, and Jen, thank you for coming on. Thanks, Mike. And longtime Derby coach, now in his 27th year, I believe, Mr. Joe DiMartino. And Joe, I also would like to thank you for coming on today. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Joe, let's start with you. I mean, we're, we're almost going on four decades here of you being the coach of this program. Did you ever think when you took over in 1991, you'd be here in 2017? I was hoping. I was hoping. You know, <laughs> I, I really enjoy it and uh, something I enjoy to do. And uh, I'm still enjoying it even after all these years. And so I'm going to continue to do it until I guess that ends. <laughs> right. And if I'm not mistaken, you did coach with Joe Borzelli for a couple of years before you took over the program? I was his volunteer assistant for a couple Volunteer years, yeah. assistant, right. So let's get right into the season a little bit. Let's talk about Derby softball. And last year was a rough year for Derby, but, you know, it was a very young team. What's the outlook for this year's program? Um, uh, we have a lot of kids returning from last year's team. Um, we have a very good freshman class, three, three kids that are pretty good softball players that are going to help us tremendously. So uh, I'm looking for some good things. I'm looking to – you know, improve on the one and nineteen, and I really think we can make a push for the state tournament. Right now, Jen, let's talk about now. You're the JV coach, longtime assistant. I think you've been with Joe since you were a player in like '93, correct? That is correct. Right. So now you're the uh, head JV softball coach. What's been the difference? Has it really been a difference, or business as usual? No, I mean it happened at a good time um, with some other things that have been going on with the program, but. Um, you know, there's really not much difference. I, you know, I, I come ready to go every day the same way I did before. Um, you know, 18 out of the last 20 years I, I was there. Two years because where I was working right. just, it didn't happen. So, um, but yeah, nothing's really changed other than and now I get a paycheck. <laughs> nice. Um, coach, talk to me a little bit about who who's the key uh, pitchers for this year's team. Uh, returning uh, from last year's team is my, my daughter, Lacey DiMartino. Um, she was kind of forced into the situation last year. Right. Um, so she struggled a lot, but she's worked worked at it and has gotten better. And then um, Alexis Engem will be my second pitcher. She's a freshman. Wow. She shows a lot of promise. Right. And what it, what's the biggest challenge for her as a freshman? What do you w- worry the most about with a young kid like that? I tell you, I'm not really worried. Uh, she's a pretty good player, and she you know she's very confident, and uh, she's played a lot of travel ball. And, and I think she's ready for the for the challenge. Right now, who who are the key returning players from last year? I'm sure you have a few that contributed last year. Um, I believe Anna Chevarella was a key contributor. Yeah, uh, fantastic player. Um, right. Um, made all division last year. Right. Um, did, had a really good year. And she's who great. are the she's a great all around athlete, Anna Chevarella. Right. And who are some of the other uh, players you're expecting good things from this year? Uh, Annalisa Salazar is a Really good center fielder for me, senior, my leadoff hitter, um, pretty quick. Um, expecting a lot of things from her this year to, to be a good leader for us. And um, Amelia Carloni's back from last year's team. Uh, she, she caught last year but really wasn't a catcher but had to fill in for us. Um, due to the low numbers, she's playing first base this year and much more comfortable over there than behind the plate. Right. We definitely need her bat in the lineup as well. That's a – Probably the biggest stick we have. So Big, strong girl, hits the ball hard. Right, right. You know, hitting was kind of a challenge last year. Are you guys going to be a better offensive team, you think, this year? Yeah, I mean, based on practice so far and, and seeing the kids, you know, uh, even off the cage, I, I think we're definitely going to, you know, make a little more noise this year offensively. Right. There's always – every game is always a key game, but what are some of the teams that you guys are playing this year that you look on your schedule and say, you know – we have to either win that game or at least be in that game to have a chance at the tournament. Uh, it's a tough question. I mean, listen, the NVL is a pretty tough league, right? Um, you know, we look at you know the Waterbury schools we try to compete against. Um, you know, our two non-league games are, are against uh, Emmett O'Brien and Platte Tech. We, we right. certainly want to be competitive in those games, and um, you know. The league again is very tough. You know, we're hoping we can be competitive with you know, Sonia, teams like that too. You know, but then there's the big dogs like Seymour and right. Torrington and Wolcott and Watertown. Those those are very good programs. Right, Coach. What is 
what could you say has changed the most from the time you started in 91 to now? I mean, what has been the biggest difference in softball that you've seen, the biggest change? It's just really grown. The pitching is a lot better probably now than it was in the beginning, you know, in the beginning when I, right. when I coached. Uh, and then, the, you know, the, the numbers, the numbers game, you know, we have 13 kids on the whole team. Um, when I first started coaching, we had, were mid-20s, upper 20s. You know right. I mean? So that's been the big thing, the, the participation and, and getting the kids to come out. And those AAU leagues have been huge. I mean, those weren't really around when you first started, correct? I mean, they were just kind of growing then. Yeah, they were yeah. kind of growing then, you know, but, not, you know, not a lot of derby kids played in it, I know that. Right. What has been the biggest change from when you were a player to as a coach that you've seen? Jen. Well, one of the uh, the biggest changes is, you know, like you just referred to, is, is kids playing pony ball. Um, you know, AAU is more of a basketball term. Um, you know, travel leagues, that type of thing. When I was in high school, they didn't really have that stuff. Um, slowly, increasingly, you know, five years after I graduated, they started picking up, and now they're just, I mean, you can't find a field that you can go to and just hit some balls on a, on a weekend anymore during the summer right. or the fall because there's hundreds of teams out there. And they're competing now from 8U up. So it's 8U, 10U, 12U, all the way up to 23U at times. You got kids right. that are playing in college that are playing 23U ball. And, uh, you know, they don't want to give up, you know, when they're finished college. They still want to play a little bit. Right. So, I mean, that's that's one of the biggest things. Um, hitting and, and, and hitting techniques now with uh, kids now having multiple pitches is, is a huge difference. Right. Um, you know, you didn't see that stuff when I was back, you know. Back in 93, 94, 95, you know, that, that time frame. You see a kid throw a really good fastball and maybe a little bit of a changeup. And I got kids throwing screwballs and rise balls and drop balls and right. all sorts of stuff that you didn't see before. So, you know, it, it's grown. It, you know, it kind of is now comparable to, you know, the game of baseball a lot where there's a lot of different types of pitching. So the kids have to adjust when, when they're in the cage and, and when they're ready to, you know, they got to be ready at the plate to hit whatever's coming at them. Right. Now, last year, I think you had 10 players on the team, so you really could not afford to have an injury. This year you've got a few more kids, but still injuries are a big thing and you hate to have them. What, how do you, what do you do, you know, as far as trying to keep these kids healthy the whole season when you have such, you know, not the biggest numbers? Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough situation. Uh, right. You know, we're not bad. The, the starting nine, not too bad on our team. Right. Um, but if somebody goes down, it's going to be a, a big hit for us because, you know, the subs that we do have are very young, very, right. very inexperienced. So got to try to keep them healthy. That's all we could do, you know, make make sure they're stretching properly. You know, they're getting loose properly and, uh, you know, keep them as healthy as we can. Right. It, it helps us a lot right now that we have a full-time trainer at the high school. So right. she's able to do a lot of conditioning and things with them that we haven't been able to have the past couple of years because um, we hadn't had a full-time trainer in, in a couple of years now. So she's keeping them as physically fit as they possibly can be outside of what we're doing with them to keep them game ready. Right. Never mind the fact you got to deal with injuries, you got to deal with numbers. But in the last few years, you've especially had to deal with the weather, not cooperating. And I think you've only been able to practice outside once or twice this year, correct? I think we're today yeah. will be day three, I day think. Day three, yeah. Right. Yeah. How hard is that? How do you get a team ready to play when they can't even go outdoors and they're expected to play a game, you know, yeah, within the next day or two? It's hard because you can only do so much in the gym, you know what I mean? Right. And, and you're not using real balls in the gym. You're using softies. and So it's a t totally different feel, but – you still got to go through all the preparations of getting ready for a game, you know, all your cutoffs, all, you know, all your infield plays that you have and stuff like that. So, I mean, you still have to go through it in a gym. It just makes it a little more harder, you know, as far as. Do you think um, there comes a point where I know it's hard to do because you got to get the season over before the kids graduate, but do you think there has to come a point sometime where they have to push the season back a week or two? Because in early March, the weather, it could snow as we saw you know, in early March, and it's becoming a big problem, I think, and it really affects, you know, when the girls get out on the field, and boys for baseball as well. I think it's hard. Uh, a lot of the Catholic schools, a lot of the Catholic high schools and some of the private schools, right. they get out so much earlier than the public schools do at the end of the, the um, you know, at the end of the school year, so I think they try to kind of put it where it's like right in the middle of them getting out and, and public schools getting out, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the weather, you know, everybody says global warming is not happening, but it is. I mean, look right. around you. It's happening. So yeah. it's hard. It's hard to get everything done. I mean, when you're in the gym, you focus a lot on hitting. You know, that's that's the plus is that you get a lot of hitting done where, you know, when you get out in the field, it's a lot of defense, um, focusing more on that. So if there is any plus to it, it's getting a lot of uh, hitting, a lot of swings in. Right. 
You know, Coach, I think when you first started coaching, your first child was born during that season. So now we're talking 27 years later. And I think you've gotten to coach all three of your daughters, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. But what is – being a coach is great, but how enjoyable has it been to be able to coach your kids as well? Yeah, it was a dream come true for me, you know. But right. it's difficult. It's difficult yeah. to coach your own child. Um, you tend to be a little harder on them. And uh, sometimes it's – you bring that stuff home too. So it's kind of – it gets hard sometimes, you know what I mean? But um, I've really enjoyed coaching – my my two older ones and Lacey's a senior this year and um, I have one more left. She's ten. I'm not sure I'll still be there by then, but <laughs> we'll see. Right. Um, let's talk about some of the young kids on this team. Just name me a few kids that you know may not get a lot of playing time this year, but you expect big things down the road for them. Well, uh, probably the the three youngest kids that we have that. Um, right. you know, would be probably JV caliber kids at this point, but are improving over even over the past two weeks, um, would be, uh, Ariana Ellis. Uh, she's a freshman, right. uh, Cariana Rodriguez, which I believe is a freshman or a sophomore, um, and Jasmine Abbott, who's a sophomore. Um, those three kids are probably, um, the three that I would highlight the most. And what positions are they at? Um, they're all outfielders. Outfielders, right. Yeah. And, you know. We're just now getting, you know, finally getting a couple days outside where they're able to take a couple fly balls. And, you know, it's getting their confidence, uh, you know, in line so that we can get them some playing time. Right. Um, we also have uh, someone new to the team this year, uh, Christina Carloni, who's okay. a sophomore. Right. Um, you know, she plays some basketball for us this year as well. And she's she's a very athletic kid, very coachable kid. And uh, I see big things for her in the future uh, on this team. Anybody goes down, she's probably, you know, gonna definitely the first kid to go in. So, she, I, I feel like she can probably play infield or outfield. So, right now, how excited are both of you with the new stuff that's going on with the fields and the new projects that are going on? How how great is that? Never mind for just the softball program, but derby sports in general. I mean, it's it's a great time to be a part of derby athletics, you know. And right, um, you know, you just kind of sit back and let it all happen around you because you know you don't really have much say in what's going on but you know you give them an idea of what you're looking for for your program and all the coaches get together and we talk and we want to make sure that you know whatever's there is you know going to be very beneficial to all the kids um right. you know the yeah. money from the state and then the money from from miss payton it's just we, we can't thank them enough for you know giving our kids a chance to have um some really great things to to be able to work with right be nice to get a new clubhouse. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> that clubhouse has seen seen its better days, so it'd be nice for the kids that you know to finally have a nice facility to, to come down to before a game and stuff like that. Right now, before we talk about some of the great teams you've coached, I want to move away from softball for a second. And you know, you were a pretty good wrestler when you were in high school coach, and I believe 1984-85 season you were state champion for wrestling. Correct? Yes, 1985. Right, and what weight class did you wrestle in? 140. Right, so just talk about that a little bit and how j enjoyable was that? Because that was the wrestling program was what maybe nine years old at the time, at that moment. Yeah, it started in the late seventies. Um, right, wrestling was my first love. Um, and also, you're the current coach of Oxford High School, correct? Correct for the wrestling coach, yes, team. Yes. Right. Um, you know, there's some coach Buster's like a father to a lot of a uh, lot of his ex wrestlers and. No different with me. He taught me a lot. He taught me how to coach wrestling after you know I graduated. You know, I coached with him for 13 years, and uh, a big part of my life. And, and, and again, like I said, my first love. So um, I really enjoy it. And I gave it up for a while to watch my daughter play basketball because I was right. missing all her games. And then after she graduated, you know, I told my wife if, if something opened up close by, I'd like to give it a shot. And Oxford opened up, and I was able to get it. So. And if I'm not mistaken, you also started the wrestling. Uh, program at the Derby Upper School, correct? In the early 1990s, the year before I became an assistant coach with the with the high school, I, I was right. a middle school coach, correct? Right. And one of your former players, I remember Rick Cassini. He'd always said how you told him when he was in eighth grade, "You'll be a state champion someday." And he was able to realize that dream his senior year in '95. Just talk about how enjoyable that was for you to see that happen. Yeah, it was. You see, you see, a young kid with a lot of talent, and 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 to see him progress every year, and and then meet his goal and be a state champ and you know i was a part of that and it, that's very gratifying as a coach to to see a kid work so hard to to get to where he wanted to go and, and he was able to achieve it right and people don't realize the work ethic it takes to be a wrestler you got to maintain your weight and 
you guys were always practicing four hours every day. So, I mean, you, you're going to school every day and then four hours on the mats. So there wasn't a lot of social time back then. No, you, you, you went to school and you, you went to wrestling, you went home, you had a little something to eat and crashed. <laughs> so it was about, the, about your extent of your day. Right. Now, if I'm not mistaken, after the 1991 season, your second year in 92, your team goes 11-11. and 11. You guys make the state tournament. The first year was a rough year, but you guys finished strong. I think you finished 8-12 and 12 We're eight and 12 after sure. starting out like 0-5, oh whatever it was. Talk about that, you know, team that made the tournament the second year, and did you feel like the pressure was off you a little bit after that? Oh, yeah, you know, when I took over the year before, they, they made it to the state finals with Sherry St. Jakes and that right, team. Right, right. So, you know, I had some big shoes to fill under Mr. Borzelli. He was a great coach. And uh, so, yeah, very nervous and wanted to get over that hump and, and make the state tournament and, and, and get that part of it over. So I was happy to do it in my second year. And, and you know, the kids worked really hard. Right. Now, Jen, um, what was your first impression of Coach D. Martino when you came out sophomore year? Or you were there freshman year, correct? Uh, I was. I didn't. I wasn't technically on the roster. I had some sort of a knee issue going on. I was right. going physical therapy for that. Because um, he will work you hard in practice. You know, he. You guys had to run those hills. Yeah, listen. Yeah. I still tell him to this day. He's he's become a little bit of a teddy bear. You know, <laughs> we uh, back in the day we were. I mean, we were hardcore athletes. We you know. Right would run through a wall for him if we needed to. Um, There's a lot of conditioning. It was a lot of, you know, different things. A lot of yelling. He was young, so he <laughs> yelled a lot. Right. Um, but it made us better players. And, uh, you know, we're starting to, starting to bring a little, little bit of uh, that Joe back this year. And, and uh, we got a really good group of kids that I think they need that. I think they need the structure and they need to, to be motivated uh, in a different way than we have the past couple of years just because, you know, the freshmen that have, that have come in along with the seniors and a couple of the middle classmen – I think we can be good. So, you know, we're just going to keep on motivating them and, and go from there. Right. Now let's talk about your 93-94 team. That was a very special team. I think they made it to the semifinals. Deanne Rovinelli was your big horse out there. And, you know, you had some great players and Ida Lucarelli, Maureen Jacko. Just talk about that 94 team a little bit and how special that was. Yeah, it was, it was a great ride. You know, um, I always dreamed of making it to the finals, and we almost got there that year. Um we got beat by, I believe, Trinity Catholic right, right. in the semifinals. Not a UNH, three. I think, right? Not a UNH, yeah. So um, great kids. You know, Dan was a great pitcher for me. And Maureen Jacko back then. Right. You know, Tasha Hyman. We had some really good players back Tracy then. Tracy Dobson, know? I believe, was on that team, right? Yeah. The, yeah. Kids were, the kids the kids, played hard, you know, and we almost made it. Almost did it, you know, but right. uh, I was proud of that team, you know, making it to the semis and – I, first time I got my feet wet, making it, making it to the big time, you know, so it was good. Right. And then, you know, the following year, you guys had another good season, made it to the tournament. I believe you got beat in the quarterfinals. Quarterfinals, quarterfinals. Right. So another great year. I mean, talk about how difficult – people don't realize. Back then you had to win 10 games too. How difficult is it to make the state tournament? I mean, people think, oh, you know, it, 10 wins is nothing. That's very hard to obtain. Yeah, back then, yeah, you had to, you had to go 500 and uh, – Back in the old Housatonic League, right. some good, very good softball teams, you know, and, and it's tough, you know, tough. And being a new coach, you know, a young, I was a young kid back then, and, you know, so I was learning just as much as the kids were, you know. And so um, when you did it, you felt like you achieved something and it made you feel good. So, and when we went on a little run after that first year when we didn't make it, we made it quite a few years after that. So it was nice. Right. I'll ask you both this. Who are some of the players you've coached or played with over the years that really stand out to you, some of the real great players that you've uh, been around? Well, I mean, the greatest player I ever coached was Christina Gilardi. Right, um, very four, good player. Four-time All-State. Yeah, yeah. Um, All-American, first team, Division Two, college. Um, but, I've, you know, I've had some really good players. I mean, Shea Harding. Right, another phenomenal player for me. In the same same year with Christina, Maureen Jacko was a three time All State player, and you almost lost Maureen because she had went to Platte Tech, I believe, she her did. freshman year, she and did. she it came a, back right well, as softball started. It was a great surprise for me because <laughs> right. I, I, I I didn't really didn't know her, and I didn't know how good she was, and right. I was, and she had played baseball her whole life, so pleasantly this surprised was her first was. introduction to yeah. softball. Right, yeah. Jen, who are some of the players you played with or coached with that really? Well, I mean, I, obviously, Christina is, is again probably the the best player I've, I've ever coached. Um, right. You know, outside of that, you got Shelby Mandillo, who was a fantastic player. Right. Um, you know, you've got 
kids like Lydia O'Bara, who was really, really good. Right. Um, Aaron Schuette. Yeah, I mean, my my year we had Aaron Schuette, which was really, really good. Right. Um, you know, I had I had the chance to play with Deanne and, and Maureen and all those kids. So right. Um, we've had a lot of kids. Sarah I mean, Castellan's another one. Who oh, yeah. Yeah, another one yeah. Right. oh yeah, another one. Yeah, It's a tough question because you try to Smith you're trying to remember all yeah. the old you know all the older kids and yeah. you know you, you want to leave anybody out. A player that probably doesn't get a lot of press, but she was a very underrated player for you. And she played, I think, two years ago for you. was Amanda Dean. Oh, yeah. Uh, very good player for yeah, you Dean guys. Dean was a great kid. Good right. outfielder, good outfielder, yep. Chalked she'd, the ball down. She did very well. She'd give you, you know, 100%, 115%. You know, she'll go right through a wall for you. Jamie Bartone. Right. I mean, you can't leave Jamie yeah. out, of, out, of the, out, of the, out of the discussion. Um, you know, her, her younger cousin, cousin Ashley was, you know, a pretty good athlete as well. Um, right. She's another one that was, you know, she'd do whatever you asked her to do. Um, then you got, you know, the Melanie kids, Christina was, was my ear. And then Cynthia, both very good athletes. Um, it's really hard to, to name them all, but I mean, there was a lot of good ones. What are some, I mean, I already asked coach T Martino, but what seasons stand out to you that you coached or played with that, you know, really, I mean, like a great year for you. Yeah. For me, it's going to be the 2009 season was probably the, my favorite season. Um, you know, you've got kids like Gilardi and Harding and Corso and, Anderson and um, that whole group was just, you right. know, I think uh, you had Sheila Cavanola behind the plate and she was, I mean, I called her Tank. That was her nickname. Like she would, <laughs> she'd let anything barrel into her and she, you know, she would do anything you needed her to do. So um, that would probably be the standout for me would be the 2009 season. Now, coach, again, I mentioned you're in your 27th year. Do you do it by a year to year thing now? You, you see how you feel at the end of the year or do you have a plan in mind when you want to step aside someday or how do you what keeps you going yeah i'd like to hit 30 yeah i'd like to hit 30 years i think that'd be a nice uh accomplishment and then um so listen i'm 50 now i'm getting not that i'm old but i'm getting up there and you know, there's a lot of young kids out there a lot of young coaches jen you know and herself and right. a lot of young coaches out there that you know listen i got a shot when i was young and you know it's only right that eventually i give it up and let a young kid take it over and give them a shot too so Right. Now, one of the things that's been going on, and I apologize for not knowing how long, but you've run this breast awareness cancer softball event for the last how many years? Uh, this will be the seventh year. Seventh year. Um, you want to talk about what that is so people could get an idea of what exactly you guys do with that? You want to start? You want me to start? Um, my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer six six years ago. Seven years ago. Seven. Well, six, Seven years. I think, with the first game yeah. was. Right. Um, but... Uh, you know, the team and the coaches saw what she went through, and uh, we wanted to do something to make a difference. And uh, so I, me and Jen talked about it, and uh, we wanted to do something to help cancer patients. You know, and, and we decided to do the, the pink game with Aunt Sonia. Um, Tony Pick, great guy, um, was all, all for it, on board with it. And it just blew up from there. I mean, the first year we put it together, and maybe the Maybe in about a, a month's time. It was about four weeks. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, I think we raised about 1300 that first year. Wow. And uh, after going into our seventh year, we're up to $18,000. And uh, it all goes to Griffin Hospital, Hewitt Center for Breast Care Wellness. And uh, we just try to make a difference to the people that are suffering out there and, 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 you know, maybe the people that can't afford a wig or can't afford right. certain things we, we help them out you know by giving them that money it goes right toward the the patients itself so Lori was treated right. there so you know that's where the money goes back to we want to give back to you know with Lori being in remission we want to give back to you know the organization that helped her get through you know the toughest time of her life right and i believe this year's game is going to be played on saturday april 22nd that is correct um the varsity game will be at 11 o'clock derby versus ansonia uh, last year we started an alumni game which uh, i've been right. wanting to do for a couple of years and he keeps telling me no 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 and last year we did it and you know we had we had 30 kids show up or 30 you know 30 ex-players nice, right. um between ansonia and derby if you coached or played for ansonia or derby and you want to play you know let me know um it's just a lot of fun to get Not everybody both together. Men and women play, or is it? We had all females last all year, females, but I mean, yeah. we wouldn't be opposed to you know if if you know some one of our old coaches wanted to pop in and, and take a swing or you know pitch right. to us or whatever. That's fine too. 
And it has to be a lot of fun. I mean, you know, you're doing it for a great cause, but you're also getting to play softball yeah. and you're raising money. I mean, it has to be a great time. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, the a lot of people come out, they, they like the food. We do, um, we get hot dogs from, last year it was Hummel Brothers, every year before that, and then again this year it'll be Boar's Head. They donate the hot dogs, which is really nice of them. ShopRite always donates the rolls. Um, hot Tamale and Seymour donates um, fixings for, we do uh, walking tacos, which is, you know, always a big hit. Um, I know I have somebody bring me one every inning, so, uh, <laughs> so and then we've, we've got a ton of raffles. So, you know, we've got a 50-inch TV this year, 50-inch smart TV that, that we're uh, going to raffle off. Kids will have tickets for those. So if you know anybody on the softball team or you want to reach right. out to Joe or myself mm-hmm. uh, and you want to buy a raffle ticket. Do drop in. Do drop Jason, in. Really yep. Really yeah, good to us. Help Jason's us a huge, huge, huge supporter of this game. Um, if I need anything, I call him and, and it's done. So um, he's actually taking care of the tv this year last year he's taking care of the t-shirts for us in the past he also gives us an additional donation right whatever we need he's he's fantastic so um go have some wings go visit <laughs> the dewdrop <laughs> <laughs> and um how is your wife this present time she's doing very well very right good, very good. right thank you yes, right. very well and that's good dear and um talk about what was i gonna say talk about <laughs> the goal for this year's team obviously to make the tournament but you know if they fall short what is the real goal as far as what do you want out of them the most just get better each game or yeah, we want to we want to definitely improve on last year's record and, and and right you know i think we can definitely do that and you know, just to see them get better each game you know and, and, and make progress right you know i mean and you know every day of practice you want them to improve every every game you want them to to learn from something that happened in that game and, right. and you know make it better the next time so you know for for us that's that's going to be the best thing is just watching them get better each and every day we're out on the dirt. You know, the, senior, the senior class is kind of special to me because my daughter's in it and right. all her friends, you know, the, her three other friends that play. I mean, I've known those kids since they were little kids too. So I'm really hoping and, and, and pushing that we can make the tournament for them so they can experience it once out of the four years. Right. And like anything else, it's going to come down to pitching and you believe you got two solid pitchers who could really keep you guys in the games this year, correct? Yeah, I mean, they're young. My daughter's still young at pitching, and, right. and I still have the freshman. But, yeah, I think we can certainly be in most of the games. I mean, there's going to be some games that are going to be tough. You know, Seymour, Seymour, and there's not much you can do about right. that. They're loaded every year. but you Which know, is amazing when you think well, about it. Yeah, it's crazy. But, I mean, yeah. listen, good for them. I mean, they get it done every year, and they, they, they keep rebuilding and rebuilding and with, with really good players have a really good feeder system sometimes it's hard in the unveil i mean you're you're classist right. school and, and you're small and you know you've got some athletes and some kids that you know just want to be a part of something which is awesome too you know the numbers are the numbers so um it's hard sometimes to go against these double l l right. schools that are just powerhouses um but you know we keep going out and fighting every day a little engine that could <laughs> <laughs> and you've coached in the Housatonic League, the SCC, the MVL. Which league did you think was benefited Derby softball the most, and which one has pretty much been a hard one for you guys? Well, listen, the the, the the SCC, you know, where you finished is where you played. So, like, if you finished at the fifth or sixth in your division, you played all the five and sixes. You never played against the ones and twos. Right. So it kind of helped us a little, you know what I mean? Right. Um, and then, you know, the S, the who's the old who's not, it was what it, you know, just a tough league. Tough you know? league, and, yeah. And yeah. you just battled. But, you know, probably, you know, like I said, more kids out for the team back then and more athletes you had to choose from. So maybe it made it a little easier back then to at least compete with those teams. Um, the NVL is just tough league, tough league. Right. I mean, it's, it's very strong in softball. And, you know, two out of the four state champions last year came out of the NVL. Right. So it's, it's a tough league. And you guys have been in that league, what, seven years now, correct? I mean, it's been a while. It's just since been a while. Since like 2009, yeah. maybe. Yeah, 2009, I think, was the last SEC year, so. Right. Coming so, up I mean, on seven years, yeah. Definitely a challenge, but, I mean, this looks like a good group of girls. I mean, they all seem like good kids, too. So, I mean, obviously you haven't been able to be outside much, but you've enjoyed coaching them thus far these first two weeks. Yeah, you know, it's a great group. Um, nobody has a bad attitude. Everybody comes every day ready to go and, you know, they're smiling, happy kids, and, you know, we let them listen to a little bit of music this year at practice, and that kind of makes them a little happier as well, but they stay focused. You know, sometimes that's something, you know, you got to give a little bit to get a, get a little bit from them. So, um, 
you know, we we had a hard start to to the season with with Joe not being around a little bit and uh, with some in, with an injury. So, I think this group is is a great group of kids. Right. Really easy to coach. So. And coach, you're doing okay. I know you had a little injury, and I don't think you ever got hurt as a player. And you know, just being a coach as you get older, you know, the injuries catch up. But That's you're doing it. okay. Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you. Right now, the other thing with a young team too is. And I think this hurts kids sometimes is when there's not a JV game being played, stuff like that. Do you find it difficult, and do you think you will get some JV games in this year with this group? I don't know. With 13, it's going to be kind of hard. Um, you try not to have any starters from last year play in JV games, and right. unfortunately that's about seven seven of the kids on our roster, and we only got 13. So um, we may be able to sneak one or two in, but we'll see. It, it is hard. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, you'd have to take almost five starters out of right. the varsity lineup, and, and then you risk with the four it and young hurt. kids. Yeah, and, you know, if somebody gets hurt in a JV game or something, yeah, then you jeopardize your varsity, you know, games. So very, very difficult. And you know, we'll try to keep those kids motivated, and you know, get them in the games to pinch hit, pinch run, get them in for an inning or something, whatever we can. But you know, it's it's tough with thirteen kids. Right now, do you have a middle school program, or yes, there is a middle school yep, program, middle and school who's the coach of that? Uh, the the new coach it's been uh, Tony Gonzalez for a couple of years, right? Um, and the new coach is John Barcevich. Okay, um, Tony's still around, kind of helping him out, but John just took over the program. He brought him. We had a scrimmage the other day. He brought him down to watch the scrimmage and kind of see you know what what he expects out of them and and what you know softball looks like. He has a lot right. of young kids as well, so um, there are some some good eighth graders that were. You know, just waiting on to come up next year. Um, uh, Jenna Olnowski's younger sister Kaylee's there. Right. Um, I'm not sure the other the other girl's name. There are a couple that are that are coming in next year that'll be very good. Right. Now, one of the things as a former player, when I see old coaches, it's really weird for me to ever call them anything but coach. I'll still see, you know, Charlie Desenzo or John D. Francisco, and it's very hard to call them by their first name. Yeah. And I still look at them as a coach, and I still get intimidated to this day when I see him. Let me ask you, coaching with Joe, how? What was the adjustment from playing with him to coaching with him? Were you intimidated, or? Oh, I mean, of course. Uh, like I said, when I was in high school, he was a bear. I mean, he was, you know, just making sure that you were doing what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> he yelled when he need to. Um, so the first couple of years, it was, you know, a little, little difficult. And you know, it got to a certain point where, you know, I would call him coach, and he'd be like, "It's okay, you can just call me Joe now. You know, you've been here long enough. It's time <laughs> to call me Joe." So right. Um, you know, for me, the respect level, you know, has always been there. He, you know, he's like a second father to me. He always has been. You know, there's there's a uh, an umpire that we get a lot um, at our home games, uh, and he always says I'm like Joe's fifth daughter out there because um, <laughs> I've I've been around him so long. You know, so right. But yeah, it is. It's uh, it's difficult to go from calling somebody coach to uh, to calling him by the first name. Right. Now let me ask you. You talked about Coach Borzelli a little bit. He, I look at him as a coach in general. He was a very good basketball coach, did a lot of good things with that girls program, did a good job with the boys with the amount of talent he had. Mm -hmm. And we saw what he did with the softball program, won a state title. Just talk about what you learned from Coach Borzelli. Like, what was the biggest lesson? Just, you know, preparing the girls for the game and stuff. You know, he uh, he was a great coach. He really was. I mean, I, I've, I've learned from great coaches in my career. I mean, right. Mr. Borzelli, Buster, uh, Charlie Desenzo coached with me in softball when his daughter played for about right. four or five years. So I've had the best around me. So you know, I'm very privileged when it, when it comes to that, that be able to have those great coaches around me. You know, I remember volunteering with Mr. Borzelli and we're at, we're at a away game and he gets screaming, yelling at the official and he gets put to the bench. So he's like, you got to coach, go coach third. I was like, I'm not ready for that. And he's like, well, you got to get ready. Go get it, you know. And I went and coached third base for the game. It was scary, but I got through it. And, uh, you know, he just he, he prepared me to take over. He really did. And right. that, that, that was – he knew he was going to be ending in a couple of years, and he knew how much I liked doing it. So he kind of prepared me and, and taught me all the ropes as far as how to control a team, work a team, and practice right. situations and stuff like that. And so I, I got – I'm thankful for, for being – able to you know coach under him right now were you a baseball fan in high school or not as much no not as much I so really, you learned I really, everything I, uh, you know, just I, by coaching with Joe. dating my wife in, in, in high school and she had a younger sister and she was playing rec softball and uh, they needed a coach for down there to, co to coach her team so i kind of did that and then that's how i got involved and then mr borzelli's like why don't you come out me out and that's how i got started 
Right. Now, Jen, is there ever a goal for you someday to be a head varsity coach? I mean, would you entertain that? Yeah, I mean, everybody's got a goal in life, and you know, right? I have, I have two, and they may sound silly, but to me, you know, it's being a head coach and being an athletic director. So those are those are my goals. Right, and I mean, Jen has been around Derby as long as anybody I can remember. You know, a long time. Um, coach, what, what's been the most rewarding thing for you? coaching whether it's wrestling softball what is the thing you've gotten the most out of it i just you know the, the relationships i've had with my players you know I, all my old players that i see they they you know they they contact me on facebook they ask me how i'm doing um when i see them out in the streets hey coach how are you um the alumni game they did last year a lot of the girls came back and you know it's just nice to see a lot of the the faces i haven't seen in a right. while you know and you know same thing with wrestling you know I, I, great relationships with some of those kids you know dave stack and you know that that great team with three state championships in a row right um, mike and anthony yeah you know, anthony defala you know um robbie french those kids they're just great kids to coach you know and it's nice to have a bond with kids like that and it makes it all worthwhile right what's been the most rewarding thing for you jen yeah i mean there's been a really uh a large group of kids that i've been able to not only coach on the field but to mentor a little bit off the field you know making sure they're getting what they need to get done, get into college, um, keep in touch with them while they're in college, making sure they're staying, you know, where they need to be, that type of thing. I've got quite a few of them that are, you know, like little sisters to me at this point that I still talk to to this day, you know, going all the way back to, um, you know, probably, I don't know, 2000. So right. I hadn't been out of, you know, I hadn't been out of high school that long. And, you know, we're, we're great friends now. So it's, it's again, that, that connection, the relationships that you build, uh, not only with the kids, but the parents, uh, other coaches in the leagues, you know, Joe, Joe's friends with tons of, of uh, coaches from the SEC and the NBL that, um, you know, I haven't had that experience yet. Some, some, you know, you know, especially, right. you know, some of the coaches my age, but, um, yeah. How would you like to see 2017 and this year? I mean, what's the ultimate goal? I mean, of course it's always to win a championship, but realistically when you have a young team would make in the tournament, make it a great season. Really would, you know. Yeah. The, the, the senior class has never been to the tournament, right? Um, in the four years that they've been there, so to achieve. Now, when's that the goal, last time Derby went? Two thousand and twelve. Two thousand eleven. Eleven. Two thousand twelve so was seven and thirteen. Jordan's we just senior. missed it. Right. And what would be the goal? Uh, for me, it would be you know obviously you want to win eight games, but I also want to see a lot of close games this year. Um, right. I don't want to see a lot of blowouts and and games where you know going in that that. You know, they're double L, L, L schools that you may not be able to compete with. I want to see those games be nice and close. You know, we have the caliber of kid this year between the, the seniors, a couple of the, the middle classmen, and then the freshman um, class that came in. You know, we've got the ability to be able to stay in games, and that's where I think we need to be. Um, you know, we, we haven't talked about two of the other freshmen. Uh, Riley Miller uh, will be playing uh, third base and second right. base for us. And then Madison Colwall, who is uh, probably the best catcher we've had um since Shelby Mandela so been a couple of years right with the ninth graders you have this year the eighth graders coming in can this team in four years compete for a state title uh but I don't know I, I would hope so I mean that's those are pretty big shoes at this point but you know I've always said this and and you know I talk to parents a lot about this it, it always seems like with our program it's kind of like six years of really really good kids um, decent players that, that are going to take us into the tournament every single year. And then it kind of almost falls off a little bit, and it's got two or three years um, where there are you know, not a lot of athletes, and, and that's just kind of the way that it seems to go in, in Derby with being a small school and getting the small numbers. Um, and that's kind of where we are right now. I think we're right at the at where we're starting to, to pick up again. We're on the uptake again. And, you know, that's that's positive for us, and it's positive for the kids that are coming in. You know, the kids in middle school are, are working a lot harder now, knowing that, right. you know, the team is improving and that things are going to are, are start going are gonna start going start up this year. So um, we all have goals, and, yeah, I mean, that's that's the goal. If you don't mind, too, I'd just like to add one more thing to it. You know, rewarding about coaching. You know, my daughter, Jordan, who's uh, 23 years old, Right. Uh, is now the assistant coach at over at a- Sonia softball. So oh, nice. she kind of wow. followed my footsteps and, you know, loved sports as much as I did. And, and now she's coaching, and I'm very proud of her for that and wish them luck today. So let me ask you, who's your wife going to root for when you guys play? <laughs> she's still a Red Raider. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jen, I th- you're a jack of all traits. You do everything for Derby, and, you know, 
you're always giving your time to every sport, every program, and I really applaud you for that, and I think you're doing a great job. And Thanks, I think you're good for this softball program. I really do. And Thanks, Mike. Coach, I mean, you've been around – Derby sports since you were a little kid. I mean, again, a state champion in wrestling in 1985. You were with that program for about 15 years. You've been the head coach 27 years with this softball program. And, you know, if you're not good, they'll get rid of you eventually. So the <laughs> fact that you've been here says a lot about you. And I really do commend you on the job you've done, especially just being around these kids all these years. I appreciate it. And like I said, I enjoy it. And uh, hope we have a good season this year. That's what I'm looking forward to. I thank you both for coming on, and I wish you the best of luck, and go Big Red. For Valley Sports Rewind, I'm Mike Kenichi. That was JV coach Jen Moffitt and head softball coach Joe Martino of Derby. Goodbye, everyone.